Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Today, I'm going to talk about a couple topics that mm, have been in the news and it, it's just not looking good for the people. All right, when we come back. Hey, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend. And today, I want to talk about a couple topics floating around in the news that are very disturbing to me. Now, this is not necessarily a bitch session, shall I call it, uh, but it is a awareness, something that just is weighing heavy on my chest. A couple things I want to talk about. First off, is I noticed, or I didn't notice, I read in the news that Georgia has passed a bill and it is, I'm gonna get my, uh, I don't like talking from third party jib jab, but the bill is Georgia House Bill 1084. And the bill title is Education Curricula or training programs which engage certain concepts. So, you may have heard about this bill if you watch the news. The bill is, from what I've read, uh, it was uh, presented by Representative Wade of the 9th District in Jones of the 47th, Dubnik of the 29th, um, Meeks of the 178th, Thomas of the 21st, and others. And the bill discusses what teachers can and cannot say in regards to conversations or curriculum pertaining to racism or race. So, now, I read a good portion of the bill, first two pages, section two, and the key phrase that keeps popping up is divisive curriculum. And so, in looking at the word divisive, It's talking about teachers not giving the giving the student the information. So, if the information is fact based, give it to them. Yet, don't get into allowing the students to elaborate on the concepts where it begins to divide the individuals in the room or the students amongst each other or the students amongst the school or the students amongst the state, so forth and so on. So I'm going to say somebody's going to challenge this bill due to the First Amendment. I see a big gray area in telling teachers what not to say and Another some some terms such as race scapegoating or race stereotyping, those terms are in the bill. And they've got um let's see, what other what other topics do they have? Race stereotyping means ascribing character traits, values, more values, moral or ethical codes status or beliefs to an individual's because of his or her race so that's uh that definition it talks about each local board of education local school superintendent and the governing body of each character school shall prohibit employees 
from discriminating against students and other employees based on race. So it's a mix. It's a mixed bag. I mean, some of this stuff. True. We don't need discrimination in the schools. We do need to squash that out. The question is how to cut out um, verbiage from the conversation. How are we, how are teachers supposed to basically remove certain words from their vocabulary in order to fit the bill for fear that they may get a complaint from a parent because a student goes home and says, my teacher said this. So interpretation is definitely going to be um, the deciding factor. Definitely going to be the deciding factor. Now, from my, uh, um, here lately, you know, I've been doing a lot of reading in my classes in regards to identity, how we identify ourselves and researchers have come across the concept that race is a social construct okay meaning it's in place in order to classify and categorize that's it it's not in place for any other reason so the classification part came about due to laws passed by governments to tell one race that they couldn't do something, okay? And the only way to classify them was to create these social constructs that cause division amongst the people. And that was it. There is no other reason why uh, race, the word itself, exists other than to create a categorization for uh, these concepts or these, these rules that needed to be passed, okay? So what I see going on in the world right now, um, I basically see it in legislation, Texas, don't say gay, Florida, don't say gay, um, Georgia, don't talk about race and don't make somebody feel bad. What I see is you have some individuals who are uncomfortable with verbiage who are also concerned that the tide is shifting. That's the best way I can explain it. The tide is shifting and it's not in their favor and they want it to be in their favor. And so they are creating the rules to make it and keep it in their favor because there is no other reason with all the things like gas prices going up to four or five dollars, um, issues that are pressing inflation, uh, rent. Um, <laughs> let's talk about the financial issues and how those issues, but see, talking about those issues, you're talking about people's pockets. And when I say people, I'm talking about officials, government officials who receive donations from businesses, therefore they have to walk a tight rope. So instead of talking about money and finances and how to help people in an economical position, it's better to talk about don't say gay, don't talk about race because those are arbitrary. Those, those really have no significant importance other than to appease a group of people. So this is this, I see all this as backlash from what happened in 2020. 
2020 tore up a lot of people's stuff. A lot of people got upset by what happened in 2020 with the riots. And rightly so. I don't think, let me get a sip of water um, real quick. I put my top on this. I don't want that spilling over. A lot of businesses had uh, stores damaged, merchandise stolen, and that that hit their bottom line as, you know, something like that devastating will. And what I see happening, now this is my interpretation, my complete opinion on how I'm seeing all this playing out. But businesses who are connected to legislators have basically said and stepped up or stepped to and said, hey, we need you to address some things. We need you to have this conversation and we need you to look at passing this type of bill. You're in that position. Help us out because we see a shifting happen in the minds of young people who at this time their minds are most influential so let's do our best to recondition them because they've lost some conditioning there was a an interesting um chapter i read in a book and it talked about the gutenberg parentheses and parenthesis and basically gutenberg was the one who invented the printing press and prior to the printing press information flowed from my mouth to your ears after the printing press books and magazines and and you know periodicals were created capturing this information allowing people to now read so now you have to deal with the uh, illiteracy of people and teaching them how to read and you know it took a while before illiteracy uh, dropped to a, a significantly low rate I mean up until I believe I want to say the 1900s um, it was a high number of illiterate people in the world and so now the Gutenberg parentheses is that time frame, if you can just imagine a parentheses, where information is, it flows from the mouth or pen into the book, and now it's a recorded um, document where people can read and absorb and take in the information. When the internet comes on and people can now upload videos like this information is now out all over the place okay so it's, it's this video acts is almost like a little parentheses it's capturing just a little bit of information in here when i get it out into the world wide web each of my words can become its own individual element it begins to float into the ethers and through the algorithm. And I say this um, because what I see happening with the legislation is the attempt to control the boundaries of the parentheses because information is flowing so fast they can't keep up. And information is liberating. It is freedom. Yet, government, and you can do the history books, government has always had this concern that the people could not handle what they, the information, the, 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 the rule making, the finances and so forth. So they created their own system and order to freeze that information, to stop it from um, coming out, right? 
So that's what I see happening right now. All these rules and stipulations and bills that are passing, it's about creating that parentheses again to stop information from going too far. But here's the thing. You can only do that to a certain point. That's it. Once, once students leave school, they have the freedom to find the information and it is readily available on the World Wide web. So putting a muzzle on a teacher just really frustrates the teacher until the student gets out and figures it out themselves. So, you know, if you feel that that's what you need to do, that's fine. What I hope is happening, what I hope is happening to the generations that are coming in through the schools, what I hope is happening is that they're, they're observing this because children are very intelligent. They're very intelligent. Okay. And they will figure it out. What I hope is happening is that they continue to expand their minds, question what they hear, what they see, because most of the information is about conformity. Okay. That's it. It's to conform into what society needs. And there's a lot of shifting going on right now. People are leaving their jobs. I mean, it, it, it's cray cray. It, it is just at a, at a whole new level. So government is doing their best to push people back in that parentheses and stay in that conforming. And I hope they're going out the back door and expanding their minds anyway. So I just wanted to get on here this morning and, and touch on those things. I know it's outside of my normal uh, motivation, inspiration, but I, I kind of inspired you, inspired you to go out and find new knowledge, make your own decisions, incorporate critical thinking, discernment, all of those things. Don't worry about what people are trying to feed into your mind. Control what you hear, what you want to believe, because it's you that has to wake up with you every day. All right, on that note, peace and love, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic day. Peace.